Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back. So we are continuing on discussing sexless marriage. And in this one, we are going to talk about some of the common reasons. And these are common reasons agreed on by most experts. Yes. And from both perspectives. From both perspectives. Yeah. So do you want to cover some of the yeah, ladies' well, reasons? Mean, gosh, one of the one of the top ones. Hormonal. Hormonal. Or physical. So I, I will say, I, I say physical as well because, okay, pregnancy and childbirth, that can kind of cross that line, but. Yeah, it's, you know, the biggest complaint I'm seeing with pregnancy is the wild mood swings and the way they're behaving with their partners. Right. And I always tell the men, give them a lot of grace because their body is, yeah. you know, all and their hormones are all over the place. Right. And I'm sure a lot of the guys see that as well, because hormones yes. during pregnancy can make a woman really interested I was at gonna, times. I knew better than to use the word crazy, <laughs> uh, so I won't. <laughs> and then the other issue I see sometimes is men who, the ones who don't get it, complaining about lack of sex post-baby. Oh, and, well, now, some of them are far enough past it, but That's fair. they don't understand exhaustion, uh, being right. touched out, and a lot of other things. And you cannot expect your sex life to go back to pre-baby. Right away, even at six weeks. Oh, I was thinking more takes... like six months, six to 12 months. To, you got to ex- A you lot know. of people think that that six weeks minimum is like, okay, her body's going to be back to normal. There's no way. No. It takes a really long time. And, guys, she's in mother mode. Oh she's in mom mode. So yeah. this is something the less initiated men don't get, is she's no longer your wife who is sexy. She's now a mom, and all of these hormonal and other instinctual things, which are good mm-hmm. and appropriate, it's the last thing. It's why we talk about leading the romance department. Yeah. And intimacy, not sex... And doing a lot of things to build up to it because that includes babysitters. Um, So we've got, we talked about hormones and pregnancy. Perimenopause and menopause can be another one. Oh, yes. That can make sex difficult or even painful. Right. And and here's the thing with those two things. Uh Uh-huh. It is different for every single woman. So Absolutely. Guys, I, I'd love to give you a formula. No such thing. I happen to have a friend who is in perimenopause who is one of the, I want to say it's under 10%, who wants it all the time. <laughs> uh, I know somebody whose wife had a, went through a phase of that. It was like, and, and eventually, he kind of felt like, okay, now I understand what women feel like when the right. men just want sex, but, you know, and... Again, it's not a knock. And with men, because, again, we had a lot of women coming. I'm in this sexless situation. What about me? So erectile dysfunction, uh, a lot of times for the guys, it's as much up here as anything. However, if they look like they're in their third trimester and they are not exercising, and they can also, this impacts blood flow, this impacts their ability to perform, and something that most women don't realize, just like women go through menopause, men go through menopause, there's a variety of hormones and obviously testosterone being yeah. the biggest one, which drops as we age, which right. just can destroy a man's drive. And that, that's in good relationships. And yeah. again, when we partner that with the inability to talk about sex... I cannot tell you the number of people. Or refusing to talk about who, who sex. Refuse to talk about it or can't talk about it. Because of their upbringing, the church, their family. I had someone who came to me at one point who wanted to work on sexual issues but refused to talk about it. And I'm like, we can't work on this if you can't talk about it. And if you're a 40 something grown ass man or woman and you can't yeah. talk about sex, you're part of the problem. Yeah. Now. What percentage of people can't talk about sex, in your opinion? I mean, to varying degrees, 100%. Yeah. I'd say our conversations are the exception. I would say probably we are, so. Yeah. So, a couple of other things that can cause, you know, we talked about your upbringing, cultural, 
uh, religious, religious or cultural differences. Then there's a whole if there's trauma. That's a whole separate right. probably video. Uh, if you're always fighting, I'm sorry. Yeah. Why would I want to be intimate with somebody who is being a raging bitch? Fair. And or a total asshole. Well, I was gonna say if I'm being a complete and total asshole who is insensitive right. to, and and not helping you with anything, and we're fighting. Why would you want to have sex with me? Exactly. So it, <laughs> this is not, and it's why it's, I chose my words because I knew right. you would. It yeah. does go both ways. I mean, yeah. you, what you're putting into the relationship is going to come back to you in a, in some way. And men never put into it to get something. Right. Give from a loving and abundant heart because it's the woman you love, and. Don't expect anything because, one, they have a radar when you're doing that covert contract stuff, and they know it. It kind of feels slimy, doesn't it? Uh Uh-huh. And ladies, you need to listen to that, too. Yeah. Now, the one last thing I think we should cover is I I cooked dinner tonight, and you know Mm -hmm. what I put on the salmon? I don't remember. I put spices. Oh, okay. Why? I thought you were asking, like, specific ones. No, no, no. A variety of spices (laughs) because... Men will be okay with same old, same old, right. unfortunately or sadly. However, women are not wired that way. Uh-uh. They need variety. Variety is one of the top predictors of a satisfying sex life for women. Yeah. And, I mean, literally, you could have a variety. And, and I even track what we did the last time or two so I don't repeat too many times in a row. Yeah. Because even if you know this is something that she really enjoys, if you do it too much, she might get tired of it. It gets boring. Yeah. And two, sometimes, for both of you, it's just not there. Yeah. And so that's okay. That's not indicative of a problem. That's an indicative of maybe you've got something on your mind that you're not even thinking about but is yeah. causing a block. Same thing for guys. So there's one other thing that I do want to make sure we mention. Okay. I don't want to leave out the fact that sometimes mental health can Mm -hmm. have a massive effect on a sex life or sex drive. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're not taking antidepressants, for example, SSRIs will... But they will destroy a sex life. A sex life. Male or female. Sometimes even if you're not taking those, the serotonin is not right. Um... You know, depression is heavy. Those kinds of things can have a big effect as well. I'm going to cross into an area I'm sure somebody will get offended, but you know what's as effective Mm -hmm. as SSRIs? Are you going to say sex? No, exercise. Oh, well, that's true. But sex does have an effect on an antidepressant effect. Yes, it does. Just got to put that out there, too. (laughs) I had a joke that would have been totally... (laughs) Cause this, this video to get taken out. Save by it YouTube. for later. I will. <laughs> so, taking care of yourself, exercising, yeah. reducing body fat. Uh, I'm never going to tell someone to go against their doctor's SSRIs, but I've worked with a lot of men who've been reducing them. Yeah. With the goal to get off of them because they realize this is screwing right. up my whole desire and everything and else. I have worked with a few people who've worked, you know, work to get off of them because it was messing with their yeah. sex life. Yeah. All right. I think we've covered enough. In this I think one, we've yeah. covered quite a bit. All yeah. right. We've covered the reasons. We'll see you in the next video.